Mining can be one of the more relaxing game loops in Star Citizen, and as many of you have asked to see more gameplay videos, it seemed only fitting to press the record button as I set out for my Sunday morning mining session, coffee in hand. I'm Farrister, and in this video I'll give you a mostly real-time talk through that mining trip, all the way from departing the station to refining the ore. I say mostly real-time, as I've slightly accelerated a couple of the less action-packed parts, just to keep the length of the video down a little. For context, the full journey end-to-end -end was about 37 minutes. And if this is your first time on this YouTube channel, then welcome! Here you'll find plenty of Star Citizen videos ranging from guides to reviews, so you might like to check out a few more, or even subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. And for the channel regulars, please let me know in the comments if this kind of playthrough video hits the mark for you. And we start, as always, trying to get into the chair of the Prospector. I keep my Prospector in Arc L1, and so that's where we'll be departing today. After the brief start-up and asking them to open the doors, we'll plot our route to Lyria, which is a popular quantum quantanium mining spot. Because the hangar is so wide, I don't need to wait for the doors to be all the way open before departing. The Lyria route is one of my favourites for Quantanium Mining, because it's relatively close to Arc L1, profitable, and it's a quick route to sell that loot at Arc Corp. And I'll give you a quick view of the station before calibrating the Quantum Drive. So I mentioned earlier, I've sped up some of the footage once we get into quantum travel, rather than force you to sit and watch that, I will speed up the footage so that we get to Arcorp as quickly as possible. The Wonders of Time Travel So in terms of the loadout for this Prospector, it's pretty much stock in terms of the core components. The Quantum Drive is the usual stock Quantum Drive. All that I've replaced are the mining components. So the mining laser is a Lancet MH1 with the Riga C2, Focus and Vox C3 mining modules. The reason I chose those? They're all available for purchase at Arc L1. Once we get to Lyria, there's lots of options of places you can go to look for Contanium. Uh, generally speaking, many players seem to just look for the hilly, mountainous type terrain, and certainly there's a, an element of feeling secure in that. But you can pretty much pick anywhere to travel to and have a look around and find some Contanium. In this case, we'll travel to Shubin Processing Facility SPAL-16, bit of a mouthful, which will just take us in close to the planet itself. In terms of looking for ore and scanning, I know there's a way to do more focused scans. Um, I would love to find out more about that, so if you know of a guide, you can let me know in the comments. But for the purposes of this video, I'll follow my usual way, which is simply just to ping around and investigate some of the rocks. The advantage of Lyria is it's usually not too long before you find a rock that is golden. And Lyria is one of those absolutely beautiful moons. I love the light and shadows. So I mentioned earlier we speed up some footage, just where there's a little bit of monotony. In this case I've sped up the search as well, just so that you don't have to watch me investigating every single rock, but I've left it in as a single piece of footage, just so that you can see this is all from one session. Generally speaking, I'll fly into the rocks once I see that they're Quantanium, just to have a quick scan and see what's in there. In this case, I know that's a big rock, it'll be tough to crack. This is a small rock, so I'd need a high percentage of Quantanium. 
which isn't really there. So I'll move on. And this is pretty much how the next kind of searching phase works for me in the Prospector. I'll just keep pinging, keep flying, and keep investigating the Quantanium rocks. You can see the type of rock without having to fly in too close. We'll show you on the right hand side if it's for example a Quantanium deposit or a granite deposit and we know that we're just looking for quantanium so those are the only ones that I'll really investigate and when I do find a quantanium rock essentially I'm looking for something that will fill up the prospector. One of the great things about quantanium on Lyria is often you'll get multiple nodes fairly close by which is great for if the one node isn't quite what you need maybe if there are two or three nodes that will be enough to fill up the, the craft. Sometimes this scanning phase is seen as one of the slowest parts of actually mining, but if you're just with your coffee in hand, it's quite fine just to sit around, take it easy, fly around and look for your rock. If you haven't done already and you're out mining, binding your scan key to a different hotkey can be very, very useful. And don't forget to change your settings in the menu so that you can ping in any of the game modes rather than having to be in scanning mode to ping. I do have a more detailed mining guide available. I'll link it at the end of this video if you are looking for one, which will go through some of these tips and tricks. And as you might be able to tell from the slow down footage, after a little bit of scanning, we find a rock that's a good candidate. The mass of 4,250 and a quantanium percentage of 38.5%. My broad brush guide is that mass times the percentage of quantanium should give you 1,250 plus uh, in order to be able to fill up the prospector. In this case, 4,250 times 38.5% gives at least 1,630. So I know this rock has a good shot at filling up the prospector. Because it's so bright here on Lyria, I've just oriented the prospector just so that the green zone is in the shadow of the ship, which will make it a little bit easier just to see the progress of cracking the rock. In terms of that initial mining, I've started out at 100% just to build up that initial charge. Once we get into the green optimal zone, I'll start feathering the throttle a little. Incidentally, I do carry a couple of mining gadgets, the deployables that you can place on the rock within the prospector, usually the stronghold variant. However, for this rock, we just don't need it. One of the key things that you need when you're out mining is simply patience. There's no need to be in a rush and just letting that charge level creep up towards the green it takes a bit of time, but if you're in no rush, you can just watch it go. Then once it's into that green optimal zone, I'll start to feather the throttle a little bit just to keep it in that zone. The aim is to keep the rock charging so that it breaks without going into that red zone where potentially explosive things can happen. Here we go, approaching the breakup for the rock. I'll usually just back up just a little way as the rock breaks apart, just so that no flying debris hits the ship. Then the next job is simply to resurvey all of the broken rocks. In an ideal world, you get a good break, just like that one piece we saw with 100% quantanium. The more pieces that are isolated as pure quantanium, the more chance that when I break up those rocks into extractable rocks, it will be pure quantanium that we're taking back, which is the aim of the game.
Mining is one of the few activities in game where I tend not to use my Toby eye tracker. It's still attached to the screen, but I tend to have it disabled just so that I keep the mining laser centered when I'm looking ahead. And because we're mining Quantanium, I want to break up all of these smaller rocks before I start extraction. Once you extract your first piece of Quantanium, that starts the 15 minute timer. And if you don't get back home and get that Quantanium safely stored before the 15 minutes is up, well, bad things happen. And so it's often better to just break up every single rock before you extract it, have them all ready, and then scoop them up. Because these smaller rocks have much lower mass than the larger rock, it does take uh, a lot less power in order to get them into the zone. So you will hear that power critical warning from time to time, just as that power goes up. If for whatever reason that's going a little bit too haywire for you, feel free to back off, turn the power off and come back later. Another alternative is what I'm showing here, which is rather than being in optimal range, which is the, the closest possible laser range for the maximum impact, you can actually just distance yourself a little bit further from the rock. That reduces the laser intensity and gives you a little bit of extra safety distance. Incidentally, while we're talking about safety, I always keep an eye out for any other player ships. If I see a player ship and I'm in my prospector, I'll just leave. It's not worth hanging around to work out if they're well intentioned or not. In this case I might be being a little bit too cautious with my application of the throttle, just trying not to get into that overcharge zone. But as I said earlier, this is a game of patience. One of the reasons that I prefer the mining gameplay loop for a chilled out session than say bounty hunting or mercenary missions is it's just at your own pace. You find your rocks at your own pace, you break your rocks at your own pace and you bring them back at your own pace. All of that said, whilst I wasn't necessarily speed running this Quantanium run, the end to end as I said earlier was 37 minutes, and ultimately with a full prospector worth of Quantanium, that's pretty decent profit for a 37 minute run. If you string a few of those together, Quantanium mining can still be a very profitable enterprise. And at this point I'm just making sure that I've properly surveyed all of the different rocks. Sometimes the rocks can fall apart and sit on each other a little bit, which makes it difficult to know if what you're looking at is actually the rock that you're going to be mining. So just by moving the ship around and pointing the laser in slightly different directions, you can just make sure you've got everything that you wanted to.
happened as the little rock exploded, there was a little bit too much power in it, which is why it had a little bit of an explosion radius. Not too bad, but it's often something that can happen, especially with those smaller rocks. Again, just rotating the ship slightly, just to keep those green windows in the shadow of the rock, just to make it a little bit easier to see. Ultimately, one of the most important parts here is just making sure that you're happy that you've broken up all those large rocks before you start the extraction. In this instance, I'm pretty comfortable that I've done that, so I'm going to start extracting the quantanium. Start with the very, very high quantanium content rocks. In this case, they're 100%, so I'll start with those, and then work your way to lower content rocks later. That makes sure that what you're bringing back is the highest possible amount of quantanium. As discussed, once the first piece of quantanium gets aboard your ship, that's when the 15 minute timer starts. So this is the time when you need to start really focusing on getting things collected and then starting to head home. This trip also shows the importance of finding the right rock. In this instance, this rock should get us 100% full of pure quantanium before we head back, which is the ideal. Some of you may notice that I start extracting the rock before it even tells me that it's 100% quantanium. That's because you can often see the instability of a rock before you see the actual contents. And I know if the instability of a rock is 10 plus on the initial scan, it's highly likely to be a 100% quantanium rock. There, you see that instability plus 10, extract that away. We know it's quantanium. Now, we've been fairly fortunate with the break for this rock. Anecdotally, I find it helps to stay out of the red when you're breaking it. It seems that when you do that, maybe this is just me, it seems like it drops a higher percentage of pure quantanium rocks, i.e. you get a better break. In this case, it looks like we've picked a pretty much perfectly sized rock as the cargo bay is getting more and more full of pure quantanium goodness. I know there's a little bit left in there which I can just use to top her up. That's the prospector full, and so we'll start heading up. If you're really min-maxing this, you can probably set the route before you start harvesting the quantanium, but in this case, I'm really not worried about time. I know I usually end up at the station with about half of the time left, so I'll just pick any old quantum point just to get out of the sphere of influence of the moon before cancelling the quantum travel and then setting my route properly. Arc L1 is really a fantastic mining station. You can get everything that you need there in terms of mining gadgets, mining equipment. It's not far from Arc Corp and it's not far from Lyria. I did mention earlier that I would speed up the quantum travel footage. I thought before I do that for the return hop, I'd just give you some external view of the prospector.
Incidentally, at the mining console in Ark L1, where you buy your mining gear, you can also purchase lots of bottles of water through that console, which is very, very handy. As we jump out of quantum travel and that green tint of the Ark L1 nebula becomes visible, we'll just finish our route to the station. And of course, because it's Star Citizen, the quantum travel didn't quite work, so you're just going to have to recalibrate. It's an Alpha. So although there was a fair scanning time in this in this hopping out of the prospector, actually this is a pretty good run. We've got a full 32 SCUs of, of Quantanium aboard, which will mostly translate into maybe 29 or 30 SCUs of Quantanium at the other end. One thing to be careful of in the Prospector, she does have quite a good straight line speed, but she doesn't slow down too quickly. So as we close the distance between ourselves and the station in order to request a landing pad, you'll notice that I'm not going quite at full pelt and I'll slow down nice and early before we get in too close to the station. At this point, we'll request our landing bay. And we see that out to the left here, which is one of the hangar bays, which I find a little unusual for the prospector. But we'll take it and drop the gear. Now if you get to this point and your prospector starts beeping at you, you might want to pick up the haste a little bit more. In this instance, because I've got no yellow flashy lights, I know we've got plenty of time, so I'll just cruise in for a nice, easy landing. I really like flying into these hangar bays, but flying out in reverse can be a little bit hairy sometimes. And as we're landing complete and touch down, it's out of the chair and then out of the prospector to go and refine the Quantanium. Sometimes this part of Quantanium mining can feel the most stressful, simply waiting for elevators. This was quite a lucky run, with the elevator in the hangar bay waiting for us. And maybe this is just me, but the elevators in 317.2 do seem a little bit more responsive. They seem to be get quicker at getting you to where you're going. Let me know in the comments if you've also experienced the same. If at this point you are worried about time, you can go to the consoles and store the prospector on the consoles. However, because we've got so much time, it's not something that we need to do for this outing. And I love these industrial feeling refinery decks. So as we make our way all the way up to the refining console, we'll be selecting my preferred method for the refinement, which is the Denix Solvination. It gives you a decent output. If you're not in a rush, it gives you that output for a fairly decent price. And that's it, the end-to-end -end mining gameplay journey. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, or if you'd rather see the more usual curated videos. Otherwise, and as ever, thank you for watching.